In this video, I'll show you how to install Hyperledger Bezu and run it for mainnet and public testnet. Hey, I'm Julian and on my channel Eat the Blocks, I teach blockchain development and how to find your first blockchain job. Just a quick reminder, if you have no idea what's Hyperledger Bezu, that's an Ethereum client for enterprise applications. So you can install it on macOS, Linux and Windows, but for this demonstration, we're going to focus on macOS. If you want to try it on Linux on Windows, you can check out the official documentation at this URL. All right, so let's start the installation on macOS. By the way, the requirement for the macOS version is High Sierra or later versions. So Hyperledger Bezu is written in Java. So first we need to install Java on our computer. So we're going to install Java with a package manager called Homebrew. So first you need to install Homebrew on your computer. Then we'll go to the command line and with the brew packet ma manager, we're going to install Java with brew cask install adopt open JDK. So once Java is installed, then with brew, we're going to add the repo of Bezu. So with brew tap hyperledger. Bezu. And after that, we can finally install Bezu like this. Brew install Bezu. And after, to make sure that the install work well, you can do Bezu dash dash version. And yes, it works. So next, let's see how we can run Bezu to connect to the Ethereum network. So to connect to mainnet, all you have to do is Bezu and press enter and it's going to start synchronizing with mainnet. If you want to connect to a public test net, then you need to add the network option. So you can connect to Robston, Ring B, Coeli, and for a local development blockchain like Ganache, then here you put dev. One thing to keep in mind is that by default, it's going to store the state of the blockchain in the same folder where you started Bezu. So that means that if you switch between different network, then this folder is going to be overwritten. In order to avoid this, you can specify where you want to store the data of the blockchain with this option. And here you will specify the pass to data folder. Another important option is RPC HTTP enabled, and that will basically enable the JSON RPC API of Ethereum. So if you want to interact with your smart contract, send transaction, or just read data from the smart contract, you will need to have this option. By default, this option will only work for local host. So you are the only one from your local computer who can access your Bezu node with the API of Ethereum. And this is for security reasons. If you want to enable other computer to access the Ethereum API using your Bezu node, then you can use another option, which is called RPC HTTP course origin. So if you want to allow everybody, then you specify all. And if you want to specify just a specific URL, for example, remix, then here you specify the URL that you want. The official documentation of Bezu actually gives some recommendation if you want to start a Bezu node for local development. So you'll find this documentation at this address. So here you start Bezu with the dev network and then you pass it a couple of options. Actually, here we can see it better. So here minor enable means that this is going to be a mining node. So you need this if you want to send transaction to your Bezu node, then minor code Conveys, this is the address of the miner. So this address will receive some ether every time it mines a new block. You probably don't care about this address, but you still need to provide one. Then RPC HTTP goes origin all. So that means there is no restriction to access the API of Ethereum host whitelist all. So this is also for more flexibility Then RPC WS enable. So that is to enable the WebSocket API. So that's more convenient to listen to events. Then RPC HTTP enable, so that enable the JSON RPC API of Ethereum. 
And finally, data path. So they give you as an example, a path to a temporary location. So this folder in your operating system is regularly cleaned by your operating system. So you won't have to manually clean your file system after you finish to develop a smart contract. So once you have mastered the basic of Bezu, the next step is to learn how you can send transactions to your Bezu node. And in the next video of this series, I'll show you how to do this with Truffle. I'll see you there.